Hello! Welcome to my channel. I'm Jason White and this is Jason's Weird Reads and today I'm going to be discussing my most recent reads, what I've been reading lately, and what I plan to read for uh, winter. So how about we just get right into it, shall we? So um, <clears throat> if you watched my last recent reads, you know that I started rereading Anne Rice's The Vampire Chronicles and I have uh, not stopped. I, I'm glad that I haven't stopped because this has been an incredible uh, journey going back through these books uh, that I haven't read in like probably 30 years and I, I, I haven't just stopped uh, with the Vampire Chronicles. I continued sort of because I finished the first uh, what four or five books and I went straight into um, uh, the Mayfair Witches books because they do they do connect in the later books and so I'm, I'm in my Vampire Chronicles reread I am adding on the, uh, the Mayfair Witches to get the full story. There's going to be a couple books that I am skipping, at least one book, and I'll, I'll just say what it is right now, and it's the Vampire Armand. I don't like the Vampire Armand. <laughs> uh, I don't, it's just, I don't know why, but Armand and me, we just don't get along. <laughs> and if he was, if he was real, uh, he would kill me. I'm, I'm quite certain he would just burn me up. But yeah, I don't like The Vampire Mond. I've read that book before and I didn't like it either. I don't know why, I, I still don't know why I don't like The Vampire Mond. It's like the one character I just can't stand and I don't get it. But, uh, I, there's a lot of other books that I'm planning on reading. So how about I just get into uh, what I've read uh, since the last time we've talked. Last time I was in the middle of Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice, and uh, I absolutely loved this book. I, I remember thinking before going back into these books that uh, the Vampire Lestat and Queen of the Damned were sort of like the low points of this series, and I disagree with myself on that now. I think that Queen of the Damned uh, is a very interesting story. There's a lot going on in here. There's so much vampire lore you learn so much about the vampires in this, about the ancient uh, vampires and how the vampires came to be, which you sort of touch upon in the Vampire Lestat. I think in my last reading, uh, recent reads video, <clears throat> excuse me, I said that you could probably put the Vampire Lestat and uh, the Queen of the Damned together as to one book, and you could, although there's a huge shift in narrative, uh, as far as I know, this is the only book in the... Uh, well, at least in the first four or five books, uh, up to Memnock the Devil, this is the only book that's not in first person, at least not completely in first person. At the beginning of this book, Lestat says that he's uh, he's going to write the book uh, from other people's perspectives. And there's actually a funny part. Uh, if you've read these books at all, you know how Lestat likes to go on and on and on about himself and how beautiful he is. <laughs> and uh, he says that at the beginning of the book when he says I'm going to switch to a third person narrative so that I can get everyone's perspective he says don't criticize me for the other characters I'm going to write in their opinion of uh, when they think I'm beautiful because I know they think I'm beautiful it's just uh, it's just it's kind of like an inside joke I think within the series and but anyways, this book is fun. It's it's kind of slow. I think you kind of have to really enjoy the way Anne Rice presents the story in order to really dig this book. But man, I love this book. Um, it, it would be one of my favorites. Um, maybe one day I'll tear the vampire books when I'm done uh, the rest of them. And we all know it would be last. Uh, it'd probably be the vampire Armand. So, so I really enjoyed this book. And, and right from there, I moved on. To Tale of the Body Thief, right here. This is another fantastic addition to the series. Although, technically, the series could have ended uh, at the end of uh, Queen of the Damned, but it's it's good that it, it continued because this book is just a lot of fun. Um, there's uh, some very weird things that happen in this book. Uh, some things that could be considered controversial. Uh, the basic story is that Lestat is just minding his own business when he noticed that he's being stalked by this uh, this human. And he learns that this human has a spirit within it that can, it's a human spirit, I guess, but he's learned the ability to steal bodies. Uh, it's, it's like a, a, a body thief tale. He can switch bodies with someone if he wants to. 
and he can steal bodies. He tries to steal Lestat's body, but Lestat's too strong of an entity, and so he strikes up a deal with Lestat. He's like, hey, you know what? Um, how about we switch bodies for a little while? You can feel what it's like to be human again, and I can experience what it's like to be a vampire. Now, this is one place where I think it's controversial. Uh, I think, you know, Lestat makes a lot of brash choices in this book. And at the very beginning of this book, he tries to commit suicide, not because he's depressed and wants to die, but to see if he can do it. And so that sort of opens up a can of worms into uh, what Lestat's character is like. He's very arrogant, and he'll do dangerous things just to have fun. Uh, <laughs> um, and so... He says yes. It's, I guess it's not that far-fetched to, to, to say that he would go with that, but I don't know. To me, it just seemed like every, every through every inch of his decision-making at this part where he decides to switch bodies with the body thief, I'm like, what are you doing, Lestat? Are you an idiot? But he kind of braids himself for it, too, especially later on when uh, the body thief, who's a liar and a thief... <laughs> uh, decides he's going to keep Lestat's body. Now, when Lestat is in the human body, he does something that is uh, the second and probably most controversial thing. And I'm going to I'm just going to spoil it because it's definitely a content warning. Um he sort of accidentally rapes a woman. And it, it, that that's a weird thing to say accidentally. Um and it's hard to it's hard to uh express honestly this that's probably a big turnoff for a lot of people but he's in a human body for the first time in hundreds of years and he's suddenly and the vampires and vampire and Anne Rice's vampire lore are not sexual creatures even though they're all beautiful and and uh, if they were human you'd probably want to sleep with them yeah, you'd probably want to. And, you know, there's like a rule within the vampire society to not turn ugly people into vampires, although they don't specify it that way. They're like, only turn beautiful people into into vampires. But I digress. Anyways, he's, he's, he's in this uh, human body for the first time, and he's overcome by lust. He goes out on a date with this woman, and uh, they start making out, and he just sort of loses control. And it's like every excuse of a date rape that you could ever hear and it's it's kind of disgusting but he he's very remorseful at the end of it um that's like the biggest i was kind of like huh i, I mean i i don't remember that part the first time i read this book everything else in this book though is a lot of fun and you know speak uh, going on again about um uh rape uh there's like a, a sort of rapey theme in Anne rice's book uh, there's like a, an underlying theme in some cases of like rape fantasies and I don't get it but that's just me uh, it's not going to make me uh, stop reading Anne Rice it's just uh, it's kind of more of a sign of the times you know if you knew Anne Rice at all if you were a part of her uh, uh, people of the page on Facebook you know that she was very uh, very progressive and liberal and so the one thing I love about Anne Rice is she's not afraid to go anywhere uh she goes where the story she feels needs to go and this story is no exception uh the next book is definitely no exception either um but this book uh has quite the uh the ride it, it the one thing that's fascinating about this book is th it's not the story that matters the the idea of the the body thief taking and lestat you know the body thief and lestat switching bodies it, that's that's not really what the story is about the story is about uh, Lestat's sort of struggle with existence. Uh, he's kind of having an existential crisis through the book, although he, ha he handles it with his uh, typical flair of comedy and, uh, you know, downsizing the issue itself and until he gets into very, very deep trouble. And uh, this book is, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there were some interesting twists and turns in, in relationships between Lestat and uh, some of the other vampires when he makes this stupid decision to switch bodies. And also there's, there's a, <clears throat> one thing that I forgot about the first time reading Anne Rice's books, uh, like 10, or sorry, uh, like 20, 30 years ago, is I forgot how funny she can be. There's a lot of comedy in this book as well. And so I recommend it so long as you can get past that weird, awkward, um, uh, rape scene and of course next 
I read. Memnock the Devil. Memnock, the big Memnock the Devil. An interesting thing, when I read this book so many years ago, uh, I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed all the Christian mythology that's in this book. This time around, um, well, I should backtrack just a little bit and say that back then I was uh, more open to uh, God and, and Jesus Christ. Uh, Christianity, I was open to Christianity. In fact, there, I went through a period where I wanted it to be real and I went to church and and <clears throat> I ended up stop, stopping that because I just found it found it empty to be honest with you but that's just my opinion I'm more of an agnostic and I had to sort of grow into that and realize it about myself but this book makes uh, you know Christianity real but of course it's from Anne Rice's point of view and so of course again there's going to be some uh, blasphemy and Anne Rice really loves the blasphemy this book starts off with Lestat once again being stalked by a strange uh, character um, and it turns out, I'm going to spoil it just a little bit, because it does go on for a while, and you're wondering who this person is who's stalking him, or entity, I should say, because it's quite clear from the beginning that this entity is, is not human by any means. Uh, but it turns out to be the devil, Memnock, the devil, who's uh, stalking him. And basically, when we learn uh, that it's Memnock, we also learn that uh, Memnock wants wants uh, Lestat to join him in his, uh, in his continuous fight with, uh, with God. And so he takes Lestat on a journey through hell and through heaven. Actually, I believe he goes through heaven first and then hell. And uh, there's some really weird things that happen in this book. The one reason why I really struggled with it is, is all the Christian mythology. It was just, uh, I, the first, like I said, the first time around, 20, 30 years ago when I read this, I loved it. Thought it was one of the better ones in in the uh, series. This time around, I just I no, nah, I just couldn't get into it. I finished it, but it, it definitely not my cup of tea. I also read recently, and I talked about these next two books uh, in my Halloween. Move my camera here in my Halloween video, but I want to talk briefly about them again because I did read them recently, and I wanted to just add them into sort of the the list here. Um, and I read October Roses by Mark Allen Gunnels. Now, this story is about a young woman who's uh, in college, and she finds that she... Uh, I decided not to, uh, because it's a pretty short book. But I, I figured, you know, it's probably not a big deal if I go into what the plot is about, uh, a little bit at least. And it's about a young woman who's in college, and she... Uh, uh, she finds that she's dreaming about these murders and when she wakes up she finds that the murders are real that they actually happen so obviously she thinks it's it would be rational to think that you're the one who's doing them you're getting up in the middle of the night and somehow you're doing this and so she thinks she's doing it but she learns she learns something not only about herself but about what's actually going on and I, that's where I didn't want to spoil things it's a very good story uh, but you're not going to get anything in depth. Um, I would read it. It's a Halloween story, and it's a slasher story. And I would read it around Halloween time, but you can read it all year, obviously. You don't need to wait for Halloween to read Halloween stories. But it, it's a fun story. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, I generally enjoy anything Mark Allen Gunnels writes. It's one of his earlier stories, and you can, can kind of tell the writing is a little bit more simple, which... There's nothing wrong with that. It's You can burn through this book so fast because of that and because the story is just so much fun. I also read Mr. Glowbones by Ronald Kelly. It's a collection of Halloween short stories. And this this set of stories was just so much fun. I, uh, I can't recommend it enough. In fact, because of this one and the Halloween story, which I read last year, it's prompted me to read more Scott Kelly books in the near future. So stick around for the... Uh, what I'm planning to read this winter, and you'll see what I've chosen. And I also, for uh, the whole Buddhism thing that I've been doing lately, I uh, also read No Mud, No Lotus by Thich Nhat Hanh. I'm not too sure if I've discussed this book or not, and so I wanted to discuss it here a little bit in case anyone's interested in Buddhism at all. I still don't call myself a Buddhist, but I, I, I read about it, and I follow a lot of Buddhist meditations, and I listen to a lot of Dharma talks. If you don't know what Dharma talk is, basically uh, Buddha's wisdom, his teachings, uh, brought to you by teachers, and they tell you uh, they tell you basically the best way to live. It's not how to live. It's it's 
because when you go into investigating Buddhism, you got to take what you find truthful and sort of adapt it into your own life. And I find the whole thing very fascinating, mostly because it deals with uh, the idea of consciousness and where it, where it comes from and what it is exactly and uh, how to suffer. <laughs> and this book is, uh, is exactly that. It's, it's a book about how to suffer. Thich Nhat Hanh has a quote that's fairly famous and it comes from this book, I believe. And that is, if you know how to suffer, you suffer less. And that is such an important part of everything within Buddhism. Um, basically, what it comes down to is the reason why we suffer the way we do is because we continuously want things to be different than what they are. If you can accept the situation as it is, if you can find that sort of equanimity, then, then you'll find a lot more peace. And you will hurt, you will still go through pain, but you will suffer much less. And so, No Mud, No Lotus by Thich Nhat Hanh. I highly recommend that. There's a lot of meditations and stuff at the back of the book. So it's, uh, it's, if you're looking to help uh, ease your own stress in your life, I, I would highly recommend this book. Let's move on to what I am currently reading. So, continuing on my Anne Rice journey, I am reading, I'm about halfway through, almost exactly halfway through, the Witching Hour. Now this book, this book is insane. <laughs> um, there is so much in this book. I don't think this book is for everyone either because it's like over a thousand pages I believe. Let's see here, yeah. It is a thousand and thirty-eight pages long and there's so much that goes on in this book. There's a lot of people who would probably say that this book needs an editor, that it could be easily 400 pages because in the middle there is a part which is basically the entire middle where we get the Mayfair Witch's uh, entire history very detailed. In fact, if there were dentists in like the 1700s, you'd probably have dental records <laughs> of the Mayfair Witches, at least the important ones. And that's, on, honestly, for me, that's not a criticism. I'm joking around a little bit, obviously, but... But uh, this book goes really deep into the history of the important figures of the Mayfair Witches. Um, and also, this book is a huge lead up to what I, I, if I remember correctly, to Lasher, which is the next book. Um, this book uh, starts off with the story of uh, Michael Curry, who's, uh, he's, he owns like a construction company, he's very well off, and he, he almost drowns. And... Uh, that experience turns him into a recluse and a bit of an alcoholic. And the person who saved him is Rowan Mayfair. And she was out on her boat one day and she saw him drowning. And so she, she, she brings him up on the boat and she, she, uh, she brings, brings him back to life, uses CPR. And he doesn't know it for a while until he, he says publicly that he wants to know who saved him because he wants to thank them or I forget what it, what it was he wants to tell them, but he wants to at least talk to them. Oh yeah, he wants to lay his hands on, on her boat because after he drowned, he came back with uh, this weird power where whatever he touches, he gets very mundane uh, little bits of information about whatever it is he touches, which includes people uh, and items. And so he wants to be at the spot where, um, where he almost died and he wants to touch it. And so Rowan... Uh, she she contacts him and now there's there's this one this part that I just described uh, Is one thing that I don't like in books today, but I still I accept it in this book probably because it's Anne Rice and for some reason Anne Rice could probably write about um, Her grocery list and why she wants to buy everything on that grocery list and I still be pretty fascinated It's just one of those authors that work with you and probably doesn't work with other people, but it works for me so uh, the thing is, it's the insta-love uh, thing, because Michael and Rowan, they meet up and automatically and they're in, they're in love together. <laughs> now, there's a reason why they fall in love so quickly. It's almost like a faded thing, and you learn later on, after you get through all the history. You, don't, you get to the history because uh, uh, Michael goes to New Orleans, and uh, while he's there, he meets um, Aaron Leitner, who's from the Talamasca, and 
he knows that he's somehow involved with the Mayfair witches. His, the Telemasca, they 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 investigate paranormal things, and and you you meet them in the Vampire Chronicles with uh, oh I forget his name David Talbot, and um, Aaron Leitner is actually talked about in the uh, in the first uh, or. I guess it was Tale of the Body Thief, I think. It might have been Memnock the Devil. Aaron Leitner is mentioned a couple of times. Anyways, uh, so the Talamasca is involved with the, the Mayfair Witches. And so, of course, they have this big-ass file on the Mayfair Witches. There's some very interesting things that happen in that middle part, though. Uh, there's a part where uh, one of the ancient, not ancient, like from the 1700s, one of their Talamascan members uh, uh, went to, uh, because... One of the Mayfair witches is actually his daughter, and he goes to visit her, and she keeps him prisoner. I'm not going to say what happens there, but it's kind of weird. Another weird sexual thing that happens there. And as he's coming back, so he wants to go back home to England. They're in America there. He wants to go back home to England, so he's traveling by horse uh, back, I guess, to the port. And, uh, and he's besieged by the spirit that pretty much haunts the Mayfair witches. There's so much in this book, actually, that, that I could. Uh, it, it would take me forever. Uh, to discuss it. Maybe I'll make a video where I go in it, into it more in depth. Maybe not. But uh, uh, that part where he's traveling from where his daughter lives to the port, uh, the spirit is jealous and kind of hates him. And so it follows him. And it does terrible things to him along his journey as he's trying to survive and go. And that part is, is horrifying. This is where Anne Rice really shows her horror chops. And I... I absolutely appreciated that. Like I said, I'm only about halfway. I'm just past that part I just described. Uh, actually, by quite a bit, but we're getting, I would say, probably halfway through the history of the Mayfair Witches before we get to the main story where we learn why Rowan and Michael are so important to be together and what that involves with Lasher, who is the spirit that haunts, actually, I should say demon because that's pretty sure that's what he is. Uh, Lasher, so I'm going to, I'm going to get to Lasher in a minute. I just want to get back to where I was and what I'm currently reading. Uh, I'm also reading The Stone Serpent by Nicholas Kau uh, Kaufman. The Stone Serpent, it's uh, book number two in, um, Nicholas Kaufman's, uh, Dr. Laura Powell series. And the first book being Hungry Earth, you might remember that I talked to Nicholas uh, Kaufman uh, about a year ago, uh, maybe a bit longer than that, in regards to the Hungry Earth, which I really enjoyed. And um, I'm nearing about 80% of the Stone Serpent, and I got to say, this book is really good too. There's a lot of things that happened in this book that I was not expecting and were a lot of fun to read. Uh, if you did happen to read the Hungry Earth at all, definitely move on to this book. It's coming out, I believe, uh, at the very beginning of December. Uh, definitely check it out. You don't even need to read the first book, The Hungry Earth, in order to read The Stone Serpent. But if you're a completist and you need to read book one and you haven't read these books yet, then definitely go back to The Hungry Earth and read that first. It's a lot of fun, but The Stone Serpent is also a lot of fun. One thing I really enjoy about these books is all the weird science facts that Nicholas Kaufman finds and puts in them. Now, just a brief, uh, a brief, uh, description of what this book is about. It's, uh, Laura Kau Kauf bleh, Laura Kaufman, Laura Powell. Uh, she's, uh, she finds herself investigating, uh, people who are dying, petrified, meaning that they turn to stone and she's a medical examiner. So that it's kind of her job to do that. And it's very interesting where this book goes and how, like, how can people just be turned to stone? And I really enjoy the uh, descriptions Nicholas uh, writes when people are being turned to stone. It sounds fucking awful, <laughs> to be honest with you. All right, so moving on from that book, uh, I'm also reading Alien Horrors by, <clears throat> excuse me, by Tim Curran. Alien Horrors is a, a collection of short stories. Uh, it's basically space horror. And I'm so glad that uh, Tim Curran put this collection together because I love Tim Curran's work and I also love space horror. And I've read the first two short stories in this uh, collection and they're both phenomenal. They're both exactly what you expect from a Tim Curran uh, reader. And 
I was thinking of doing some shorts in regards to uh, Tim Curran's uh, collection here, make, like maybe reviewing each story uh, in a short uh, for either TikTok or here. I'm not too sure. All right, so my winter reading plans, uh, we're moving into that now. Winter reading plans. Uh, what am I planning on reading during this winter? I can tell you that I'm going to tackle probably a lot of this list. Unless, of course, uh, the Vampire Chronicles starts to really suck, you might see me drift away from it and, and go somewhere else. Because I almost did that with Memnock the Devil, but I'm planning on sticking to it. One reason for that is I really want to know how this series ends, because she did end it. So I'm just going to go through uh, a little bit here. I'm going to continue with Lasher, which is in the Mayfair Witches series, because, like I said, the two connect, and I want to see how they connect exactly. Although I, I kind of already know, because I read some of those books where there's a connection, and I just want to uh, reread to refresh my mind. But also, I, I absolutely loved this book. I don't remember any of it, to be honest with you. I remembered more from The Witching Hour, so I don't know why I love this book so much, but I remember after finishing it, it was I called it my favorite book for a long time. So I'm looking forward to moving on from, once I'm done, The Witching Hour, I'm moving straight on to this. Another book that uh, is threatening for me to lose my interest in, in reading these series is uh, the third book in The Mayfair Witches, which is Teltos. I've attempted to read this one twice and I just couldn't get into it. Uh, it was like a huge disappointment compared to the first two books. So I'm going to try to push myself to finish this one just so I can say I finished the Mayfair Witches book. But like I said, I tried it twice and both times I ended up quitting because I just didn't like it. In fact, you could say I hated it. I'm hoping that uh, my, my more uh, middle-aged brain will enjoy it more now. Although there's one thing in here I know why I didn't like it, and it's another weird sex thing that Anne Rice type likes to throw in. And that's what turned me off the most, so I'm hoping I can just get over that. If you've read this book, then you, you know. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, what else do we got here? Um, from Taltos, I plan on moving immediately to Merrick. Which, this is where the, uh, uh, the two storylines... Uh, between the Vampire Chronicles and the Mayfair Witches. This is where they entwine and uh, join together. And I read this one a long time ago, but like with uh, uh, Lasher, I don't remember anything about it. The only thing I remember is that I actually, well, actually, there's no actually, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And then from there, I'm going to move on back to the Vampire Chronicles, and I'm going to read Blood and Gold, which is uh, an, another tale of uh, one of the vampires, uh, one of the older vampires, uh, Marius, I think his name is. Um, it's basically his story. I've never read this one, even though I plan to. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading that. Uh, and then Blackwood Farm, I did read uh, when it was released about 10 or 15 years ago, probably more like 15 years ago. And I have to say I loved the first half, but I really hated the second half. It, it actually pissed me off. And I'm hoping that my... Uh, my older brain, my older mind will enjoy Blackwood Farm a lot more now, especially since the series is so fresh in my mind. The things that Lestat did at the end of this book to piss me off so much might make more sense, so I'm hoping so. And from there, I uh, plan, plan on reading Blood Canticle. I don't know if I've read this one, which is a weird thing to say. I'm pretty sure I have, but yeah, I have because I bought this brand new. And there's creases on the spine. So, obviously I read it. But, like I said, man, I don't remember reading this one at all. I don't even remember if I enjoyed it at all. So, I'm going to reread this one as well. And from Blood Canticle, I'm going to read uh, Prince Lestat. And from there, I'm going to move on to Prince Lestat and the Realms of Atlantis. And then, the final book of all of it, Blood Communion. And I would, normally when I get to this area of what I plan on reading, I'd read the synopsises. But this video is way too long so far. And I'm going to be reading some synopsises, like, with the next book. And all you really need to know with these books, that is part of either the Mayfair Witches or uh, the, the Vampire Chronicles, or they're intertwined together. So, so that is, I'm hoping that I can stick with it and finish this series 
and then I can say that I've read all those books by Anne Rice, which I would have to say is one of my all-time all favorite series, both uh, The Mayfair Witches and The Vampire Chronicles. Although, with the way I'm enjoying The Witching Hour, I would, I would actually put that as my favorite so far of what I've read. I, I don't know what it is about The Mayfair Witches, but something about it, despite the things that I typically don't like, really gel with me. It, it's confusing even to myself, but it's just so much fun to read. All right, moving on to other things. I plan on reading, after <clears throat> after reading uh, those two uh, collections of short stories, those Halloween-themed collection of short stories by Ronald Kelly, I really need to read more of him. And so I'm going to start off with one of these two. The first one being uh, Sick Stuff. Sick Stuff by... Ronald Kelly. This is a, another collection of short stories. I'm going to read you the synopsis here. In the foul and fatigued darkness, it awakens, vile, unstable, brimming with ill intent, like pus on the verge of eruption, repulsive to gaze upon even, and even more disturbing to comprehend. It reaches out and discovers that the others, its siblings, have abandoned this cancerous womb long ago. Angry and alone, it thrashes violently tearing, clawing its ways, its way from dormancy into daylight and onto the dark playground of your bookshelf. Now, that almost sounds like it's just one story, but it is a collection of short stories, and so I'm thinking that maybe these stories are connected. I don't know. I will, uh, I will report back and tell you guys. And I also want to read The Saga of Deadeye, Book 1, Vampires, Zombies, and Mojo Men, also by Ronald Kelly. Now, the, the synopsis for this was so long that I decided to I'm only going to read uh, a little bit of it. So here is that first part of the uh, synopsis. The bloody war between the states and a harrowing confinement in an enemy prison camp had turned Joshua Wingate into a broken man. His nerves and spirit shattered by the barbarity of battle and demonized by a cause that his heart secretly despised, Wingate turn, returns home in hopes of finding peace and healing. But upon his arrival, he discovers that hell had come to call. His beloved wife had been violated and transformed into a horrid bride of the undead. And his only son, abducted by a band of diabolical outlaws led by the renegade vampire Jules Holland. Along for the ride are three dynamic henchmen from the fatigued bowels of Hades and the dark witch Evangeline. Aware that he is no match for the gang, Wingate rides across Georgia and Tennessee nonetheless, intent on rescuing his child from imminent disaster. During his journey, he witnesses the horrors and atrocities Holland and his evil confederates have wrought. Eventually, he finds himself at the outlaw outlaw's mercy. An instant before death, he makes the final pledge to his stolen son. I promise, Daniel, I will come for you. So I'm going to leave it at that, because that I think it should have been left at that <laughs> in the uh, synopsis, because it makes it more mysterious. The next couple of paragraphs actually sort of give away what happens after, uh, you know, his, uh, after his death, so to speak. So I'm going to move on from that. I also want to read Every House is Haunted by Ian Rogers. You may have heard of this book. It had a little bit of buzz. Uh, I believe Cemetery Dance released it. But it also, it, 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 I'm losing my ability to speak. It includes a short story that Netflix is currently adapting into a movie, and that is The House on Ashley Avenue. And that's one reason why I want to read this book. Um, also, the guys over at, uh, at the Lovecraft e -Zine, at least if I remember, I believe they had Ian Rogers on their show. And uh, discuss, I might be thinking of another show, but I'm pretty sure, quite certain it was... Uh, it was them, those guys over at Lovecraft Design, which I love. If you haven't checked out, they're on almost every Sunday at 6 o'clock. They have a YouTube channel. Go check them out. They're awesome. Uh, there are, here's the synopsis for this. In this br brilliant debut collection, Ian Rogers explores the border places between our world and the dark reaches of the supernatural. A mysterious double murder draws the attention of an insurance company with a special interest in the paranormal. A honeymoon cabin with an unspeakable appetite finally meets its match. 
A suburban home is transferred into the hunting ground for a new breed of spider. A nightmarish jazz club at the crossroads of reality plays host to those who can break a deal with the devil for a price. With remarkable deafness, Rogers draws together the deadly and disturbing and 22 showcase stories that will guide you through the terrain at once familiar and strangely fresh. Man, that sounds awesome. I Lately I've been uh, watching that show uh, on Netflix, uh, Cabinet of Curiosities. It's a Gilmero del Toro created show. Uh, it's 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 an anthology show. I'm sure you've heard of it, and it's it's pretty awesome as well. It, it kind of made me think of that for some reason. All right, and if I have time for it, I want to dive into yet another series. So long as I get through all those uh, all those Vampire Chronicle and Mayfair Witches books, and the idea is to, if I quit that series, I'll move on to this series because I read the first series uh, last winter, and I really enjoyed myself. So I kind of want to repeat that that if I can if not it's no big deal uh, but the goal is to of course finish those other books first but I'm of course talking about the Ryuria Revelations by Michael Sullivan I have the first book here now this is actually the first series because Michael Sullivan started writing with the uh, uh, the Ryuria Revelations but I went back after another youtubers uh, recommendation to go back and read the Ryuria Chronicles first and I did and I'm so glad I did because it got me hooked I've been wanting to go back to the series I ended up DNFing it because I honestly I was kind of bored but now I know the history and I know why these guys are the way they are uh, I'm really looking forward to getting back to this book now if you know any history of how these books were published this is actually two books but uh, when he was uh, self-publishing these books, because he started out self-publishing them, and then um, Orbit, Orbit Books, uh, picked them up, and they, the the series originally was six books, and what Orbit did was they they put two books together, uh, so you, you ended up with three books instead of uh, six. So this is the first volume, which is technically the first two books, and <clears throat> I finished the first of the two in this book about three or four years ago and I liked it but it was the second one that I just kind of like eh, I'm done I, I wanted to move on to other things but now I'm excited to read these again and I can't wait now just to, in case you haven't heard of these books or heard me go on and on and on about the Ryuria Chronicles last year I'm just gonna read you a small synopsis acclaimed author Michael J Sullivan created instant bestsellers with his spellbinding Ryuria Revelation series. The first volume introduces Royce Melbourne and Hadrian Blackwater, two enterprising thieves who end up running for their lives when they're framed for the death of the king. Trapped in a conspiracy bigger than they can imagine, their only hope is unraveling an ancient mystery before it's too late. And as I said, Theft of Swords contains the two books, The Crown Conspiracy and Evan, Evan Partha, book, which are technically books one and two of the Ryuria Revelations. So I am very much looking forward to reading that series. After that, uh, after that, first, that first book by Orbit Books, you can also look for books two, which is uh, Rise of Empire. And the third book, which would collect books five and six, is uh, Here of Navron. Here, or Air, however you pronounce, however you pronounce it. All right, finally, we made it. I, I hope that I didn't bore you. <laughs> if you made it this far, then how about you leave me, leave me some snowflakes down there in the darkness. Let me know that you made it to the end, and thank you. You, uh, the people who made it this far are truly the, like, they're, they're, everyone who watches this video is special, but the people who actually survived till the end, you're extra special. <laughs> I'm being silly here, I'm sorry. So, thank you for watching, keep being creative, and keep being safe. I can't express that last one enough, keep being safe. If this year taught me anything, it's that we can go at any time. So keep being safe, and I will catch you guys in the next bookish video.